Hello everyone, welcome to Packet Tracer Activity 2.2.1 from CCMP Anchor Course from Cisco. In this activity, you will review the STP protocol, how it operates, and of course we are going to use this topology here on Packet Tracer. So what we are going to do in this activity first, we are going to check and observe this or this topology and these switches here, right? And then we are going to do some like um, scenarios here, and then we are checking the flows or the path between source and the destination, of course, by using a ping command. Okay, so let's check out this uh, topology here. First, we have the access layer. First, before the access layer, and we have the nodes or end nodes, and here we have the access layer switches. And the access layer switch is connected to the distribution layer. And as you can see here, the concept is how to use redundancy between the switches. So the redundancy that in, in some cases, one of the links gets broke, broken, the second one can still operate and cover. So the surface is still um, existed or accesses to the end users. Okay. So what we can see here, the connection between the access layer and the distribution layer is that we have each switch has two connections. One of the connections is working probably, and we can distinguish this by these two green lights or um, links here. And the second one is blocked. So as you can see here, this is the amper color here or the amper link. So this access layer, or uh, a switch A6 is connected to the distribution layer through D3. D D4 is only a redundancy when this switch will be uh, broken or uh, fall down or stop working. The second one will get in surface and still both of them will going to be green. The same scenario here with A8 or A3 here. We have A3 which is a switch in access layer which has this is which has a connection to the distribution layer and through D2 and we can distinguish this by both of these um, green lights here. This one is now idle. It's blocked by the STP. Okay, in the same scenario, we are going now to move forward. The connection between distribution layer and the core layer. We have four switches here. D1. D2, D3, D4, and D4 is connected to the core layer through now through C1 because both of them are green here. C2 is now not working, it's blocked by the STP. Okay, so here we have this the topology, and now we are going to uh, in this activity we are going to ping from PC1 to PC6 and we are going to observe the path between the two. Devices. Of course, we are going also to observe the IRP or address resolution protocol at the beginning before each ping. Okay, so this is all about part one. Let's move forward and now let's examine the IRP process. As you know, IRP is used to discover the MAC address or of the destination devices. Of course, Yes, this is mandatory because devices don't know the MAC address of the destination at the beginning of the network or at the beginning of the operation time. Okay, now let's move forward to part two and it is about examine the IRP process. So in step one, we need to switch to the simulation mode. As you can see here, so now I'm just going to do this to have it much give more space to the simulation mode so we can observe more and this I can pull it here perfect now I have the scenarios now I am in scenario 0 now I put this one here again and now what we need to do is to check or ping PC1 to PC6 and we are going to use simple packet data unit which is this one from PC1 to PC6 and then I'm going to use this 
as you can see here we have an IRB first I I use the ping with PDU so it's ICMP since this is the first ping so the device PC1 will send IRP messages or, or IRP broadcast message to discover the MAC address of the destination device which is PC6 okay so this is step one you can see here and you can see also that A1 selected the path to D2 because as I mentioned this is now the current working path as you can see both of them here are green this one is idle is blocked by STP so this is the path and the second path is going to be like as you can see here this which has two path, uh, paths the first one to C2 and the first one the first one sorry to C2 and the second one to C1 here this one will be selected because both of them are green here this one is not working because of this amber or orange color here okay as you can see here now of course this is a broadcast because it's ARP but I'm talking about the upper um, or core I was talking about the core uh, layer and here we have the ARP broadcast and only the destination device will answer here as you know the ARP protocol okay so here we have done with ARP now PC1 has the MAC address of PC6 now ACMP is going to work as you can see here we have ACMP and here we have the path so there was a question to select the path A1, D2, C1, D3, A6, PC6 and of course we have the message back And here, this is the last one. Don't press this anymore because you will have buffer problem. So that's enough for this. Okay, so we have done with scenario one. Here we have a, like a notice that the ARP reply from PC6 travels back along one path. Explain? Yes, because STP is blocking the redundant links. And record the loop free path between PC1 and PC6 we already done this PC it was like done PC1 and then A1 and then D2 C1 and then D3 and then A6 and then PC6 okay now we are going to examine the ARP process again but with a different two devices so here we need to switch to scenario 1 As you can see here, we have another scenario, scenario one here, and we need to bring two different PCs. So let's talk about this one, PC4 and PC5. And then we start first with IRP. As you can see here, we have an IRP messages. And now ACMP or ICMP started. And here, this is the last one. Don't click anymore again here because you will have a problem with buffer, buffer full. So what was the path? It was PC4, A4, D3, A5, PC5. Why this one is not selected? Because this one is blocked or is not working right now because STP is blocking this link. As I, I can tell this because I have this orange here. This one is working. Okay, so let's move forward and now we are going to do part three, which is test redundancy in a switched network. Here we are going to delete this link because now the active link here, like the connection between A1 and distribution layer is through the D2, as you can see, because both of them are green here. 
and this one is not working i'm going to delete this link here right now and i'm waiting uh, this two uh, lights here to be green and then i will check the ping again between bc1 and bc6 remember the first path was through a1 d2 because this is working now okay so let's do this together i press now delete in my keyboard and then i'm going here to delete this link and then escape okay so i just have to wait you can also sorry so we need to change first the scenario to scenario 2 and then let's do this faster okay and as you can see here now we have both of them are green and now i'm going to pink again from pc1 to pc6 now notice that there is only icmp, ICMP because arp is already obtained so only the icmp messages is traveling now and you can see the link now through this lan or through this link And as you can see here, this link is now in use. Okay, so okay, in step three, we need we are going to delete the link between C1 and D3. We, again, we need to switch to the real time mode, no, and then we are going to here we have a notice that the links from D3 and D4 to C2 and these these two, both of them, are not working now then we are going to delete this one here and then we are going to check them that one of them is going like to work and then let's do this together delete then escape and then let's wait here a couple of minutes we are we should see now you can see that this link is now working because the link between c1 and d3 is not existed anymore so the path is changed from c1 c2 to d3, d3, d3 sorry and here is where, which link is now the active link on c2 and as you can see here c2 the active link has like a connection to d3 through this link F02, F01 on D3 and F02 on C2. And then in step 4 we are going to ping again. Switch to the simulation mode and then going to ping. Okay, as you can see, I have two packets or messages. However, it's no problem. The most important thing is the path between PC1 and PC6. And as you can see now, the path is changed from the old one to be PC1, and then A1, and then D1, and then C1, and then d4 and after that a6 and after that pc6 okay and now we are going to delete c1 we are going to delete this switch here and as you can see here it takes some time for stb to converge and establish a new loop free path uh, watch the for all links from D1 and D2, okay?
let's do this together so we need to create a new scenario here i think yes so going to create a new scenario here i'm going to create scenario 3 however you saw that they have redundance of packets in the previous step because i did not create a new scenario however it's no problem so now we have a new scenario and then let's delete this switch here Let's wait. Okay, now we have this green, so now it, it's fine. It's working. We, we reach the converge status or the, as the converge is established. So now we are going to ping from PC1 to PC6. Okay, as you can see, I had a problem here because I forget to delete P4, uh, D4, so that's why I had the problem left in the loop. So let's delete D4 as well. And then let's wait or switch to the simulation mode. We create a new scenario and then we add a new UDP packets. Still, the convergence is not established, so we have to wait. Now the convergence is established. And as you can see here, there is no loop anymore. And here we have the path PC1, A1, D1, C2, and then D3, and then A6, and then PC6. However, you can also like discover STB by yourself. I'm going to create a new scenario, which is scenario 5. And now let's say that I'm going to ping PC4 to PC6. As you can see here, first we have ARP because PC4 does not have right now the MAC address of PC6. ARP now receives, so IC, ICMP is now ready to be sent. As you can see here, the path. And of course. Okay, so let's create a new scenario here. And now let's try to bring from PC3 to PC4. First again, ARP is going to be used to reach the MAC address. Then ICM, ICMP. Okay, and of course, way back. However, so we discovered the path. So that's all for this activity. The package tracer, the file will be, the doc file will be sold and upload, you upload it or, or you can reach it through the description box. Thank you and I see you in the next video.